Hey everyone, welcome back to another video here on DarkSec. I am Dark, and today we're going to be taking a look at the room Simple CTF on Trihackney. This is a beginner level CTF that covers the basics of being able to research CVEs and exploit them with uh, things that we find on ExploitDB. That being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So I've gone ahead and deployed the machine and the attack box, uh, and I've also gone ahead and started enumeration. So deploy the machine and attempt the questions. It looks like our first question here is how many services are running under port 1000. In this case, I've gone ahead and already run Nmap with the aggressive flag. And we can see that we have port 21 FTP open with anonymous access enabled. Then we have port 80 with HTTP. And then interestingly, we have SSH running on a really high port 2222, which is not the normal port for it, of course. Uh, how many services are running under port 1000? That is going to be two. What is running on the higher port? I would assume that's SSH in this case. Um, and then what CVE are you using it? The application. It looks like we need to dive in and do some further enumeration. Let's first go into this FTP since anonymous access is allowed. We can go ahead and do that over here with FTP 10. Let me scroll up to be able to see my IP. 10, 10. 29.122. And we're going to log in as anonymous. Let's see what we got. So it looks like we have a public directory, CD pub, that's owned by FTP. Uh, and we have a for Mitch.txt. We can go ahead and get star, and we'll grab for Mitch, type by to close out of FTP, and we can go ahead and take a look at that file. Uh, you're the worst dev I've ever seen. You set the same pass for the system user, and the password is weak. I cracked it in seconds. Gosh, what a mess. So it looks like we are seeing that uh, the password for some sort of application is the same as uh, this user Mitch's password, uh, which is not good. You don't want to have your password reused between different um, applications. So we can keep that in mind. We know that we have a user likely named Mitch, and we know that we have a weak password at play. Uh, definitely not something that you want to leave on an FTP share. Um, let's go ahead and we saw that we had an application running on port 80. Let's go ahead and pull up Firefox and see what we've got. And in this case, we can see that there's an Apache to default page, which is interesting. Uh, this is indicative of an immature dev leaving this around. Um, let's see if there's anything on the robots.txt file that would indicate anything further. Uh, it looks like we have an open EMR, um, which I'm not entirely sure what that is. Let's go ahead and go back to our terminal. So I'll minimize this, and we'll try GoBuster against this application. So I'm going to go ahead and run GoBuster with dir, and then my word list is going to be uh, USR share word list uh, go. I think it's dir buster. Uh, let's see what we got in here. Directory list. Uh, let's try 2.3 small. Oh, you were all. Should probably specify what I'm attacking. HTTP 10, 10, 29, 122. Uh, temporarily unable to connect. Did I typo that? There. Uh... I'm going to go ahead and pause this for just a moment. When we're back, I'll go ahead and pull up the results from GoBuster. Okay. So as it turns out, I had the URL flag typed incorrectly. It's dash U. Uh, and there we go. Right away, we can see that we get a directory called simple. So we pull back up Firefox and go to 10, 10, 29, 122, simple. Let's see what we get. Now it looks like we have CMS made simple. Uh, whenever you see a CMS, think that there's probably a vulnerability. CMSs are very, very common to see on ExploitDB just because a lot of these are whipped up and thrown onto GitHub without any security testing done. And as a result, people will research them on GitHub and get zero days off of them and find CVEs uh, just as part of CVE research. And it looks like we have our version down here as well. So we have CMS made simple version 228. Let's go ahead and go over to exploit db and i'll just accept this this is just google freaking out 
We'll pull up exploit DB. You can also do this with search exploit. I'm just showing it with exploit DB just because it's easier. Uh, CMS made simple. Let's see if we can find anything fun. Okay, CMS made simple. So we had version 228. And it looks like we're already seeing vulnerabilities for another uh, later application. So that's interesting. Um, that likely means that uh, we are facing a heavily outdated application. Um, let's go ahead and see what we've got. So we have SQL injection for anything less than 2.2.10. That's likely what we're facing. And we can go ahead and take a look at this in just a second. Let's see what we got. So CV 2019 9053, that's likely something that we want to return to. It's not verified, so it might not work. Uh, this little ver uh, check mark means that these exploits have been verified. You can scroll through this just a little bit more. It looks like we have 32 entries total. So we have quite a, quite a large um, attack surface for or quite a large number of um, exploits that might work against this. I'll go ahead and pause this for just a moment. I'm going to grab the CVE that specifically we need. Double check my notes. We were correct with this one. So uh, we can see that because the application is running at a lower version than 2.2.10, it's likely going to be the SQL injection that we are running against it. Uh, we need for the question, the CVE number that is going to be CVE 2019-9053. We can go ahead and try that now. Uh, 2019-9053. There we go. What kind of vulnerability is the application? Uh, what kind of vulnerability is this? It's going to be SQLI, short for SQL injection. And it looks like we can get the password using this. So let's go ahead. We can grab this number. Actually, here, we'll just download it, make it easier. You can grab that number and use it in search point. Um, in this specific case, I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down now because it'll save in the root home directory. And now we can go ahead and minimize that. So we'll close or clear that screen. LS, we can see that we've got our 46635PY. Try running that with, I'm going to guess it's Python 2. Uh, it looks like it is going to be Python 3. Uh, please specify a URL target. Uh, it looks like we need to just specify the target that we are going to be running this against. So we'll give it just a moment. Um, let's try U and then HTTP. Let's see, 10, 10, 29, I think 122. Let me double check that. And then wait a minute, we need to do simple because that is the directory that we're running that in. Uh, it looks like we are missing something here. Let me go ahead and pause this. I'll fix this real quick. All right, so after playing around with it just a little bit, I did find that this is running in Python 2. However, we're missing some modules. Uh, if you're running this on the free attack box, you might have trouble getting this installed. I do recommend doing this on your own Kali Linux box in this specific case. The reason being that the free attack box does not have internet access um, and you will need that to install these modules. So I'm doing that. Uh, the first thing that I had to do was run Python 2-m pip install requests. I've gone ahead and already done that. Running this again, it looks like we're missing a module called term color. So we can run that right now. Uh, and it looks like it grabbed it successfully. Let's try this again. And it looks like the exploit is running. So we'll go ahead and let this keep going. Uh, it should find our username and then some additional information. And I'll go ahead and let this continue running. This shouldn't take too, too long. And there we go. We can see that we found the salt for the password, and now it's going to start looking for the username specifically. And there we go. We can see that it's found Mitch. So sure enough, we did see that that username was repeated from uh, elsewhere in the system that we found it uh, specifically within that uh, the note in FTP. Looks like we have admin at. I would assume that we're looking for the administrator email, or at least the email for that user. So admin at admin. And I'm guessing that's .com. Very creative email. <laughs> there we go. 
So now we're looking finally for the password hash itself. Uh, so since we have the salt and then we'll have the password hash, we should be able to chuck that into Hashcat and start uh, cracking away at it. And since we did see that there was a note in the system that the password cracked very quickly, um, we should be able to get that pretty quickly on our end, even with the attack box having somewhat limited resources for cracking. While that's running, I'm going to go ahead and pull up a new tab so that we can go ahead and start our Hashcat command. That's going to be Hashcat, capital O, uh, dash A, zero, and then we want dash M, ten, uh, because we're going to be running this specifically against an MD5 hash in this case. So we'll give it just a second here, and it looks like, sure enough, we did find the password. Now, for this specific mode that we're running Hashcat in, we do need to grab the password, and then we'll put a colon, and then the password hash. So we can grab that right here. Copy that in, and then we can start cracking away. And you can see one of the after effects of term color here. Sometimes running... Uh, uh, Python will change the color of your terminal permanently. I can't remember if this was green before. Um, sometimes that happens. So we'll go ahead and let this run. I will pause the recording once we're back. I will go ahead and have the results back up. All right, I was silly, real quick. We need one more thing here at the end. We need to specify our word list. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use Rocky. All right, this should be pretty quick. So it's gonna go ahead and build a dictionary. Before that, it was going to try to brute force it. And even though brute forcing would be pretty quick on this, we still wanna go ahead and make it as fast as possible. So we'll give it just a second. Um, we're gonna try that. Looks like, did it work? Nope, it exhausted it. So we might need to flip the uh, mode around. So we'll go ahead and try the other format for this. Uh, which is going to be a mode of 20 where we have the password hash there we'll go ahead and just type a new one the password uh, salt at the front rather than at the end of the password so we can go ahead and do that with dash o or capital o dash a zero dash m uh, 20 and then we're going to go ahead and flip that around so we can grab that over here Again, we'll just try the same format for the actual password to see if Hashcat likes it this way. Sometimes this can just be a game of playing around in Hashcat until we see something come back out. And we know that specifically that uh, by uh, the note on the system that this is likely the correct way to go and, well, the task itself is asking for the password. So we can go USR share word list rock you. And there we go. This should be pretty quick. We'll give it just a moment. And we should have the password here in just a second. Rock you is not very long um, compared to some other word lists. It is fairly long overall. Uh, just, I guess, for sheer word count. There we go. Now we can see that this successfully crashed. And it looks like it is going to be lovers one, maybe. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Am I looking at the wrong one? Hold on. Oh, it's secret, duh. I'm looking at the wrong thing. It's right up here. I always do this on Hashcat output. It is secret. There we go. And where can you log in with the details obtained? So we know the password is secret. We know the username is Mitch. Let's go ahead and try SSH Mitch at 10, 10, 29, 122. Let's see if I type that correctly. 29, 122. <laughs> Here, I'll pause this. We'll be right back. You know, it helps if I specify that this is not running on a standard port. I believe, hold on, we're going to do SSH-H. Um, I think it's capital P. Nope, lowercase p. Dash P. 2222. Nope, one more two. There we go. And we'll type yes. Uh, and then it is going to be secret for that password. Okay. Now we can go ahead and type who am I? We can see that we are Mitch. 
ls cat user.txt. You can go ahead and never mind. I'm going to spawn myself bash uh, because that was an awful shell. There we go. Uh, cat user.txt. There we go. So it's going to be SSH for that service. And we can copy out, uh, albeit a non standard, this flag. We can grab that right here. There we go. And then, is there any other user in the home directory? What is its name? Let's do ls home. And it looks like we have a user sunbath. Uh, what can you leverage to spawn a privileged shell? So one of the first things that I like to do when I'm attempting a privilege escalation is I will take a look at, especially if I have the user's password, I'm going to see if I can run anything with sudo. So we can try sudo tag L. Um, and it looks like we don't even need the user password. So we can run Azure root uh, vim without a password. Um, so we can go ahead and type that in here for that answer. And since we can run that without a password, we're going to go ahead and pivot over to one of my favorite resources on the web, GTFO bins. GTFO bins is a way that uh, it, it consists of a list of different uh, ways that we can abuse binaries that we would have elevated access to run. Uh, so for example, we can see if we have an SUID binary or sudo and so on and so forth here. And we can actually sort up here at the top. We're going to be grabbing specifically the Vim escape sequence. There we go. Uh, so we want sudo. And we can do that. Just copy this over. I don't know what that was. Hold on. Let's grab this over here and then paste it in. Type who am I? And there we go. We can see that we've spawned a root shell. Uh, if we cd to root, we should be able to grab root.txt. Uh, we'll copy that out. And there you go. You can see just how easy it is that if you have pseudo rules that are not properly locked down, you can just abuse them to easily escalate to root permissions. And that's one of the reasons why, especially when you're performing a pen test, you should always audit these uh, pseudo rules. Otherwise, that is going to do it for the room simple CTF. If you have any questions, as always, I will have the TryHack Me Discord as well as the separate linked in the video description below. I also will have the DarkSec Discord linked if you want to join my community. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this content, please subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, and until next time, happy hacking!